Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Assembly Lines Podcast. I'm Chris Torrance, and today we're going to take a look at a single-piece keyboard from a Rev1 Apple II and try and diagnose what's wrong with it and how to fix it. So let's get started. The keyboard that we're trying to fix came from an Apple II, not an Apple II Plus. And it's the single piece keyboard. It's actually the second version of this keyboard. The very first version actually had all of the circuitry along the top. But as you can see, this version, which is part number 01425-05, actually has all of the encoder logic over on the right hand side of the board. This board is dated October 8, 1979, which would put it near the end of the run of these keyboards before they switched to the two-piece with the encoder board as a separate board like I have in my Apple II Plus. I've already done a little bit of diagnostics on this board. The very first problem was that the cable had a broken pin on it but Harold Miller was kind enough to send me a replacement cable, so I took care of that problem. The problem that I'm seeing, and I'll show you in a minute, is that it outputs some characters fine, but other characters it outputs completely wrong, and things like the return key output as a capital M instead. So something strange is going on with the logic. These boards all have this National Semiconductor MM5740 encoder chip here and this is a 90 key keyboard encoder. I actually took this chip and put it into another Apple II keyboard and it worked fine. So I'm reasonably confident that the chip itself is good so it must be something going on with the rest of the logic. Now one thing I know for sure is that this keyboard was actually plugged in backwards temporarily and so I'm a little bit worried that something got fried because that would have sent uh, minus 12 volts and plus 5 volts through pins that weren't expecting it. So if you're working on one of these old keyboards, you're gonna to wanna to pick up a copy of the Apple II circuit description, and you're also gonna to wanna to head over to Mike Willigal's website, as well as Mike McGinnis's 6502 Lane website, because there they do some reviews of the different keyboards and also show teardowns of them. And I'll have those links in the show notes. Here's the keyboard hooked up to my Apple II Plus. So most of the keys in the middle work fine. Uh, the H is actually stuck down, so that's a little bit of a problem, but not a big deal. The problem is all the number keys give strange characters. So this Apple II Plus actually has a lowercase chip in it, but if I hit the number one, I get a lowercase Q. And similarly for all of the numbers, they just give strange lowercase characters. Now the shift key seems to make a difference, and then I just get different lowercase characters. The control key doesn't seem to do anything, so I'm not getting any beep. And then similarly, if I hit return, all I get is an M instead of a control M. And then same thing for the arrow keys. I'm just getting an H and a U instead of control H and control U. We're going to go ahead and remove all the keys so we can clean it. Now, the easiest way that I found to actually remove the keys is to just very carefully go underneath just the edge of the key and rest the tweezers or whatever your tool is on the edge of the previous key and then just slowly work it up while holding it straight. You don't want to go completely underneath the key because then you might actually end up getting underneath the key stem itself. So you want to make sure to go underneath just the edge so you pick up only the key. To do one in the middle you can just do the same thing except just very gently work your way up like that. So for the space bar, it's actually held on by one stem in the middle and then a pole that goes all the way through. So once you've lifted it up, you should be able to just tilt the key and then slide the metal bar back and out. To fix the sticky key switches, I'm gonna follow a technique described by John Kenny Morris. And that's just to take some 91% isopropyl alcohol and just very carefully put it on all four sides of the key switch while working it up and down. You don't want to put a bunch of alcohol in there because there's actually some membranes in there and 
the alcohol will actually destroy them. Here's the schematic of the Apple II single piece keyboard and I've marked off all of the keys that have problems and the interesting thing about all of these keys is they all have they all have bit 7 set to low however when you press these keys they actually are outputting as if bit 7 was high instead so if we look at bit 7 where it comes out of the 5740 we can see that this is actually connected through a NAND gate to pin number 7 on the keyboard connector this is the cable that was plugged in backwards and you can see that if you flip this around and plug it in backwards, pin 15 here, which normally has a supply of minus 12 volts, is going to end up connected to pin 7. By plugging in the cable backwards, we've actually shorted out this NAND gate and fried it so that it's stuck high. And that's why all of these keys, when you press them, end up giving the wrong key as if that bit was set. Hey Steven, on that Apple II keyboard, I think one of the 7400s got fried. Oh, a uh, quad two input NAND gate? I think I have a few of those lying around from like 1987. You want me to send you some? Sure, that'd be great. All right, I'll put it in the mail. Awesome, thanks. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and fire it up with the new 7400 in there and see how it works. So let's just try the letters. Those work great. And now the real test is the numbers and success. All right, so all of those work great. And let's see, return now returns. The control key still works. Oh, okay, there's still a couple keys which have problems. Uh, so semicolon still isn't working properly. Let's see, shift is working on this side. Shift on the other side is not working. So those aren't problems with the chips. Those are just problems probably with the keys themselves being stuck. So for the really stuck keys, I'm gonna use a combination of CRC contact cleaner, which is safe for electronics. And as long as you don't use too much, it shouldn't hurt the membrane inside the key. And then I'm gonna follow that up with just a tiny bit of silicone lubricant, which should hopefully free up the stickiness of the key. We were able to restore this Apple II single piece keyboard to working condition by replacing the 7400 quad NAND, which had been blown out by plugging it in backwards. We also took off all the keys, cleaned them with isopropyl alcohol, and then sprayed a few of them with CRC contact cleaner and silicone lubricant to fix some of the stuck keys. So everything appears to be working now on this keyboard, so we can go ahead and bring it back to the Media Archaeology Lab and plug it into the Apple II there. So thanks for watching. Should I shave for this, or is it okay? <laughs> no, I don't think um, I don't think shaving is necessary.